Hi, and welcome to Have a Chat. I am Veronique Gersno, your host for today. I know, it's, that sounded weird. It's Veronique. How you doing? Uh, always joined by my incredible co-host, Judy Loge, of course. And it is Monday all over again. Welcome, everybody. It's a hot, beautiful summer day. I know. I love it. I love summer. I know. And, and funny enough, uh, we're all in blue. And we are. We didn't plan that, but it's okay. It, <laughs> it, it, it matches, and we're doing okay. We're not feeling blue. We're just no. wearing blue. That's right. That's right. It, blue. Yeah, I, love a, I love a good blue in the, in the summertime. Yes. Um, so you know what? So a uh, huge show ahead. So excited about our guests. And I say that every week, but it's because I actually mean it. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to everything that we're going to talk about uh, today. And uh, But we're going to kick it off with your quote. All right. Well, I want to clear up an unpopular truth here today. Fantastic. <laughs> It reads anonymously, you can be genuinely kind, loving, considerate, and still possess the power and ability to use your voice, stand in your truth, and let others know when they've got you messed up. Being kind does not mean being silenced or accepting of people's disrespect. I love that. I we love do that. that. We do that, right? Yeah, I, you know what, and it's, it, it took me a long time to be able to say, you know what, I didn't, I didn't like how that went, or I didn't like, you know, those tough conversations. Mm -hmm. um, I, I worked a lot on, uh, on that at work because, you know, of course, being a manager of people, you, you have to have tough conversations yes. often. But there's absolutely a way to do that and still maintain your, your respect and dignity. I dignity, think. right? And to, and to still maintain the dignity of the person that you're talking to. Mm -hmm. You don't have to degrade someone or make them feel, you know, bad about oh. themselves when you're setting up your own boundaries. It's, it's about how you feel and about what you need, not necessarily about, you know, them as a person. And gently sharing what they should know about you that you want to say it without throwing it at them in a harsh manner. You can yeah. still be gentle, as it says, considerate and loving of that person. It could be family you're trying to talk to about something personal. Mm -hmm. But do you think people are sometimes kind to a fault? I do. Oh, for sure. Overly generous to the point where, look, there's nothing wrong with being generous and kind. I'm mm -hmm. all about generous and kind. But to the point where you, people expect. Yes. And then once it stops, then they're gone kind of thing. Yes. So it's, you know, who's there for you. There's the takers, the givers, and the ones who appreciate. But there's the ones that you think, okay, um, I, I've given you and given you and given you, mm -hmm. and sometimes there's no thank yous, I and know. I don't mean thanks as in a card or a yeah. big hug. It's just like thanks, yeah. appreciation, appreciation. Yeah, and I and I do know people as well that are kind, so kind that it's to their own detriment. Mm -hmm. Like they would give away their last dollar, you know, even though they're struggling financially. I which I mean, absolutely, kindness matters, and yeah. it's and it's important, and we we need to do what we can yeah. for our fellow humans. Mm -hmm. But I think. Sometimes what happens is, like you said, with those people that are that you know that generous and kind, people just expect it and will t and will not stop taking or take advantage of the situation. Yeah. Like yeah. I know, I yeah. know, so there's a fine line there. But let's yeah. be kind, considerate, yes. and loving, yes. and able to share gently the message we want to get across for people when we have to have that, like have to have the tough conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think you can still be a strong leader and and, yeah. and maintain empathy and kindness. Exactly. I think so. You got My it. My goodness, it's a warm day in here. It's Just so warm. You know, those, the lights. <laughs> people don't know at home how The lights are making me glow <laughs> and I'm dewy and it's really, I'm sweaty, but that's okay. We'll go with that. Um, so let's talk about summer though. And, mm. and you know, it, it's hard to believe we're now into July. I don't know where June went. That went yep. out, out the window. Yeah. Um, but you, you've, you've been, you've been busy. I had then, mm -hmm. but without hogging the limelight, just let me kind of recap all of my so-called more mm -hmm. recent events, and that was basically saying I'm going to live a bit, bit more, yeah. wear my mask in crowds, be cautious, but start to live a little. Mm -hmm. So I went to Halifax. My sister Jennifer actually was home for three weeks. She just went back. She's safely back in Barcelona as of mid, you know, early morning. Mm -hmm. uh, she arrived in the middle of the night. And so I had a beautiful visit with my parents, my sister, Aww. my brother and his family, my family. Um, those are the times to cherish. Yes. All kinds of pictures and gatherings yes. and food. And she was out in the sea with my son. And mm. so we, we did get to Halifax to see my other son. And Halifax is such a fun, vibrant place to be that we really, really love that. And mm -hmm. he got, and she got to see Evan, who otherwise she wouldn't have seen. And I've just been enjoying my pool. To me, that's my chill time, mm. literally, literally. Um, yes. Just to watch nature around and the flowers around my pool and, and to see the trees and the, you know, the setting behind and the birds chirping to me, it's just like my place to mm -hmm. go and think and be still. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, for fun things, I've been to a lot of things. I went to the ABBA Reunited, oh, I think, Revisited in yes, Moncton. Yes, yes. Great show. Mm. Was there before. Mm -hmm. I did Johnny Reed with my sister Colleen. Incredible. And he was phenomenal. Yes. That was at the Playhouse in Fredericton. Loved him. And then, uh, let me see now, um, I did the James Mullinger comedy oh, show. Oh, I love him. First time I've ever seen him in comedy yeah. or in person was at that Café Beau Soleil and mm -hmm. it was phenomenal. He's just dynamic and I'm looking forward to, we'll talk about next show, working mm -hmm. with him on a project. Mm -hmm. um, let me think, Veronique, I went to see the Elvis Preston movie, did you? I haven't yet, but I have heard such incredible feedback reviews on it. Beyond. Yeah. Austin Butler to me to take on that daunting job of representing the most legendary to me legendary singer in the entire world Absolutely. um just to cry just to even do anything like try to do his gestures let alone sing mm -hmm. and and act as he could you would think at times it was elvis and he emerged himself during covid yeah. because he was from la is from la and he spent time in australia because of the COVID, memorizing looking at emerging himself in elvis mannerisms you know, mm. all the little quivers that he did and the mm -hmm. voice and songs and, and actions and voice. And so, and Tom Hanks, kudos. If they don't get some big award, wow. there's something wrong. Incredible. I, and I've heard that. Everybody, literally everybody I've run into who has seen the movie said, run, run. Yes. Run. Yes. That's what Jennifer said, my yeah. sister. She was just enthralled. And, you know, we're both in theater and we love acting and we were so taken with it. Um, even Priscilla Presley, um, Elvis's wife, who is 75 now, mm -hmm. and his daughter, Lisa Marie, both said that they couldn't even imagine how beyond talented Austin Butler was playing the role of Elvis, who they knew intimately. They said, couldn't have been any better. Amazing, is that, I love that. Like, and, and you know, especially to bring it to life for a new, to bring him to life for a new generation, oh, no. right? Yeah. Like, I, I grew up with Elvis, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and his movies and his music, and yes. still, still love his music, absolutely. Yeah. So to bring him to life for a new generation and to bring that nostalgia back for oh, another generation. But sad, right? To think yeah. a man that had it all yeah. at the age of, what, 42? Um, what, you know, with the, with the crazy, hectic lifestyle that he had, just one show to the ne next show to the next show, burned himself out, basically, mm -hmm. and then started to try to get into the drugs yeah. to keep him upbeat, keep him going. and et cetera, so. Yeah, but he, and then he passed so young, but all of those things have just been bringing me joy. What about you? Well, you know what? It's been busy as well. I decided, um, you know, uh, to really in enjoy what I could this summer and, and to, you know, have some in in incredible experiences and to spend time with friends and family. I'm, I'm calling it. So oftentimes in social media, you hear about, you know, a hot girl summer. So uh -huh. um, going out and exploring and, and doing all those things. So I'm having, uh, obviously, I'm not a, a uh, hot girl. Yes, so I am doing the uh, lukewarm old lady summer. Oh, stop. And I, I am so, I cannot wait, to be honest. It kicked off Jan, uh, Jan, January 1st, July 1st. Uh, there was so much to do Canada Day, mm -hmm. right? Like there was the, the powwow and, and then the flag raising and the parade and, and the fireworks, all those things. So I kicked it off that day and I've got, you know, a, a high school reunion happening in, next Ooh. week and, and uh, just, you know, family coming to visit Exciting. and just really taking in all that's happening here mm -hmm. in Miramichi. Mm -hmm. And just really to talk about that a little bit, this weekend coming up is going to be pure insanity. Because, like, there is something for everyone this weekend. The exhibition is in town. The Irish Festival is happening again after a two-year hiatus. Mm -hmm. The very first international, uh, the Miramichi International Kite God, Fest kite, that's is right. happening this I weekend. I heard. I can't wait to see them. You know, the, the powwow, powwow at Natwaganeg is happening this weekend. Uh, the exhibition, I think I said, which yes. always brings back memories for yeah, me. me too. The two night markets happening in Elm Park and Queen Elizabeth oh. Park. Like, really, there is... You, you can't tell me that there's nothing to do this weekend. Nobody can be bored. No. If you say you're bored, well, that's your own fault. <laughs> but, you know, and, and there's, you know, heading out onto the water on the Max Aiken. Yes. Or, you know, taking in some of the restaurants on Richie's Wharf. And like, yeah, oh my goodness. Endless. Endless. Beautiful summer nights we've been having. I, I think we're going to be in for a hot spell now. I, I think we've so. had a lot of rain and I humidity so. and mugginess. Yeah, but I now I, I do believe we're in for summer. Yeah, and last but not least, there's the uh, official ribbon cutting, of course, because, you know, city council, politicians have to cut a ribbon. 
Um, but um, the official ribbon cut cutting for the uh, Miramichi Skate Park. Oh my gosh, Veronique! I know you oh, just had that oh. all in your head. Without... Last but not least, what you got to fill up, you got to you got to fuel up. You know, so the uh, Legion Branch Number Three yes. is having their corned beef and cabbage. Right on. But you'll be busy with your own I agenda. Know. We can't wait for you to I get know. back to tell us all about it. I know. Well, I, I leave I leave next weekend, so I'm really excited. Oh, you're around for the festivals all night. I am. I am okay, around good. for the week, yeah for most of the stuff this weekend, so I'm really Great. looking forward to that. Woo but what a summer! I think you know, like, and oh, I think, I think, and there's so much going on, so much going on. So I'm really excited about all that. But um, let's talk about some world events, though. Yeah. And some some really tough ones, mm. uh, some interesting ones, and and some you know some. Some tragic ones. So uh, the former um, uh, prime minister of Japan was assassinated. Shinzo Abe. He was only 67. And he was a former, like, I mean, it was like the JFK assassination to those people and other rural leaders, yeah, basically. Um, it was unbelievable that given the fact that Japan has such restriction on their firearms, I mm. mean, I actually got this hat in Tokyo. Oh, yeah, I did. did. You? Yeah, I did. And I thought I would wear it just to pay honor to that country because um, they are the most beautiful people mm -hmm. and they are mourning him terribly. He reigned as prime minister, or served, um, from 2006 to 2007 and then again from 2012 to 2020. Yeah, wow. he's been a long time standing wow. prime minister and then retired due to health issues. Aww. And so they're really grieving and the fact that this 41 year old gunman. Um, shot him dead. Well, it, the bullet reached the heart and the head, mm -hmm. but it took 20 medical team, mm -hmm. you know, members to try to revive him, but it was too late mm -hmm. and he bled out. Um, but they said, like, this man just had a real hate on for this former prime minister mm -hmm. who was doing a campaign right in the middle of a, a downtown area, main area of Tokyo. Aww. He was giving a speech. And so it just and brings back memories of JFK. Well, it's interesting because you, you talked a little bit about their their gun laws. So, um, you know, it's absolutely positive. There's uh, positive possible. There's no question for someone who really wants to, you know, uh, despite um, mm -hmm. strict gun laws. But it is such a rare yes. occurrence it as is. it is in this particular case uh, for that to happen. So we've talked a lot about you oh, know no. gun laws and things like that based on on. Uh, recent events, but <clears throat> in this particular case, such a rare occurrence in the country mm -hmm. for it to happen. So uh, yeah, I can completely understand why they are both shocked at the yeah. occurrence itself and mourning the man that, that's been lost, so. Well, he made the homemade gun. Like he had, he had this device that he was able to concoct and, and shoot this man uh, to kill, and then they confiscated mm -hmm. other weapons in I'm his sure, apartment yeah. too. So yeah, it's, it's very sad that's and hard. for anyone that might be watching this that has any affiliation with those loved people um, and mourning people in Tokyo, we are thinking of everybody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially, yeah, the international community. Yeah. <clears throat> it's such a small world now these days, right, with, with uh, our access to media and, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that. So, um, yeah, absolutely, our thoughts are there. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, lots going on uh, as well, kind of in the celebrity community. There is. There seems to be a, a significant amount of of illness. Yeah, which goes to show that it doesn't have to be someone you're living next door to right. or yourself to have something bizarre happen. Yeah. For example, now Brad Pitt, um, he's revealed he has face facial blindness. Now, he's not officially been diagnosed, but he has worked with the experts who say that 2% of the population have this. It's known as prosopagnosia, prosopagnosia, mm -hmm. and it's where, so, he sees people on the set of a movie mm -hmm. and say it's you. So he'll say, I know it's red hair, I know um, tiny chin and delicate eyebrows, but okay, so that, that's very unique. But okay. to put your whole face together and recognize you as a whole, he would have trouble with that. Interesting. Terribly scary because people are finding that he's not himself. Of course, they are seeing that he's being aloof yep. and basically they're think, thinking he's self-absorbed he yeah. and non-reachable, right. um, non-communicative. But basically, it's because he's fearful of not knowing you. So even if it was ex-wife Angelina mm -hmm. Jolie, mm -hmm. oh, I know she has long brown hair, high cheekbones, and full lips. But oh, yeah, that is Angelina Jolie. But to see her entire face. So is this something that can't just 
came on? Like, is it a, is it a, or he's had it for a long time, or is it a, vi like, is you, it a virus? No, you can get it developmentally. Okay. You can get that, or, uh, yes, uh, it's something it like, families, they say, can pass it on. Really? Right. So at a youthful age, a young child, it can do develop, but, but not really surface until older right. ages, or it can be following a stroke or um, something, and not so much Alzheimer's, but yeah. maybe so in that could, form. Could be a, could be a, a a precursor maybe sometimes to Alzheimer's. Exactly, but they're saying that his is, from assessment of him, it's more of a developmental issue wow. and not such a serious cognitive impairment that hopefully with therapy yeah. and talking through things, he'll get back into the scene because he's huge, Brad Pitt is Absolutely. worldwide known. Yeah, that, and it's gotta be tough to navigate yeah. that. No, yeah. um, but also uh, Justin Bieber oh. has very publicly uh, shared a recent diagnosis and right. and uh, it, he's he's working on, on improving, but he also has been quite sick. Isn't that awful? I, know. I mean, his wife, Haley Bieber, we're talking about stars now, but everyone knows who these people are because they are legendary. He's a legendary uh, musician. Absolutely. As is Brad Pitt, a uh, legendary actor. Mm -hmm. But Brad Pitt, um, has that, but then Justin Bieber has Ramsey Hunt syndrome, which is a viral thing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which affects you. It, it basically um, affected his ear. So um, it's a virus that attacked the nerve in the ear, mm -hmm. which attacked the facial nerves yes. on one side of his face. So one eye doesn't blink, no. and one nostril won't move, and he's a singer, and one side of his mouth won't move. So it's this paralysis down one side, yeah. and he's still dealing with Lyme disease on top right, of that. Right. So he, yeah, and, and it's incredible because I did see a video where he actually shared his diagnosis. Aww. And, uh, it, it, you know, it was interesting because he was showing, you know, at first he kind of just thought, is what, what's kind of, what's off, I guess. But then he showed, he said, like, see, when I smile, oh, this, no. this half doesn't do that. And it was very, very, um, I get paralyzed, but yeah, like, you, you know, and, and he said, I, my eye doesn't close. And so he said, I get, I'm getting dry eye in there. And, you know, so all those things that you don't think of, but yes. And, and he did say that his was, uh, you know, a, a virus that he caught and that, I mean, any, any of us could have it. Right. And we, we often think of Bell's palsy I with some of those similar, symptoms, right? right? Yeah. And uh, having known actually um, quite a few people who have had Bell's palsy in the last number of years, so it's it's really incredible. But there is all you know there is a treatment, and he did say he was you know working Poor on that man. and getting better. And I mean, it, it's not something I know a lot about Ramsey no, Hunt syndrome, and he's only 28 years old. But mm -hmm. he says right now, I apologize to all of my fans everywhere, mm -hmm. obviously, yeah. because I've had to cancel my world yeah. tour. It's called Justice World Tour. And obviously, if he can't sing, he can't no. be there. He's going to rest. So we're heading into a great show. We're going to go to break now. So don't go too far. You want, don't want to miss this show. We'll see you uh, right after the break. Hi, and welcome back to Have a Chat. I'm your host today, Veronique Arsenault, joined, of course, by my fantastically beautiful <laughs> co-host, Judy Loja. She always says that. Isn't that sweet of her? Well, you know. <laughs> darling. I, I got to get it in there. Right my I darling. <laughs> I know. Co-host. Um, you know what? Incredible uh, guests that are going to be joining us over the next uh, two segments. We are so happy to be uh, here and, and to be able to have this conversation. Not, not happy with how we all ended up here, but very happy to be able to have this conversation uh, in the safety of our, you know, our studio here. But uh, we are joined now by uh, Rachel Bernard, a wonderful friend of the show. She's yes. been a co-host, she's been a guest and, and a dear friend. So we're so glad yeah. to have her joining us today. She is a workforce consultant with the uh, provincial government, so the government of New Brunswick, mm -hmm. and uh, joining us for a very special reason today. So yes. welcome, Rachel. I'm so happy to be here. It's been a while. I mean, I've seen you both, you know, in the in the camera lens yeah. from working from home. But yeah. uh, it's nice to get back and getting back out in the open again. And Our viewers love you, by the way. Oh, yes. oh thank Absolutely. you. Yes, they do. <laughs> they get that you. feedback often. You know, it's thank more you. like get rid of Vero. And oh, oh yeah, right. I don't think so. I don't think so. But we are so glad to have you here today. So, Rachel, for those people, the very few people out there who don't know you, tell us a little bit about you. 
Well, my name is Rachel, as you know. I'm originally from Dalhousie, but I've been here for 22 years now, so I feel like I'm part of the <laughs> decor. <laughs> uh, and I'm a workforce consultant with uh, the government of New Brunswick, as you were saying, and I love doing what I do, but I don't think a lot of people know what we do. No. So I know, so it's, it's kind of nice to get out there and, and see people and talk to people. And through COVID, it's, it was difficult because we couldn't get out there and see mm -hmm. uh, businesses or individuals. But now that uh, things are opening up, I'm just glad to be able to get out there and, and talk more and more to, to people about what we do. Good. Yeah. yeah. As Veronique said, you're here for an amazing mm -hmm. subject that our viewers will want to hear all about, um, and that is about the Ukraine. Um, and our guests are coming, a man is coming on to follow you. But the Miramichi Support um, Ukraine Committee is something that you serve on. Tell us what exactly that is all about it. So this is really interesting. The, the, the first time that I had heard that there was an, uh, a public meeting to see uh, what Miramichi could do with their, in the surrounding areas to help uh, with the, the, you know, any kind of support for Ukrainians yeah. that may be interested in moving to Miramichi. So I went to that first meeting and I can't sit still. So I offered to be part of the committee and also because of my work, uh, it's a way for me to um, talk with businesses and see who can hire people that, that are moving into our area, whether they're you know, refugees or wanting to, to live yeah. into, in New Brunswick or mm -hmm. in Yerushi specifically. So um, that's how I got involved. I just went to the first meeting and okay. from there I started uh, participating. We have a small, uh, well, I shouldn't say a small group, the initial group, the, 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 um, the core group were about 15 of us. Mm -hmm. And we have like sub teams. Okay. So we have, you know, I have my, my team is the, the employment team. So I have somebody working with me and then we have the uh, housing and then we Language. have transport. Oh, yeah, Language. all of that. And also the MRMA is a big part of it. The Mirashi right. and Multicultural Association is a big part of that too, Beautiful. because once they get here, they need settlement um, help. So it's huge. Oh, it is. It is. It's such an important undertaking. It is. I'm really happy you're involved with this. So what, so what pushed you to get involved though? I mean, listen, Mm. You've got a lot on your plate. You've got a gorgeous grandson, yes. and I, I adore him. And, uh, you know, you've got a big job, and you volunteer all, already, and plus you've got the best girlfriends that you could possibly yes, have. Yes, I have the best girlfriends. Uh, I know, <laughs> yes, I know yes. our semi-sweethearts oh, are yeah. just really quick. No, you're beautiful. Um, but, like, so what pushed you, though, to get involved in, in, in this, and, and why was it so critical to, to support Ukraine in general? Um, I think because it's it's so out there on the TV and, and social media. I was joking one night went with my team. I said, people watch Netflix. I said, I just follow everything that has to do with Ukraine on yes. social media. And the desperation of some people now, like some people caught themselves early enough mm. that were able to leave. And, and, and my work also because of, of what the government is trying to do mm -hmm. to help out, you know, financially and, and anything else that, that can, we can do. Um, I guess it's just in me to just, I mean, I did it when the, um, um, Syrians? Syrians, my okay. gosh, I'm losing it. The Syrians, when the Syrians we were here. We all have those mind blanks. They're yeah. Old age. Oh, thank you. Yes. I'm so happy. How are you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, Luke but I, warm old lady Luke, summer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was going to say that. So, but I think it was just saying something that I wanted to do, especially after reading it. And it's just, you know, you sit home and you think, oh my gosh, what can I do to help? Like, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that's basically why yeah. I wanted to get involved. Well, you know, your heart's huge, oh, Rachel. Uh, We've seen you in action. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, so how can the Miramichi residents become involved with this Ukrainian committee? The, the, in what way can we do something? Um, there is a lot. A lot of people, first thing, I mean, people want to give, you know, mm -hmm. they want to give furniture, they want to give clothing. And th th for now, it's a no-no because no. we don't have we don't have uh, an area to put it in. Mm. Uh, Moncton, the Moncton Ukrainian Club has actually come up to meet us mm. and told us the do's and don'ts. Oh, so, okay. we, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. Right. So they talked, they were a great duo to talk with and they've got more than enough mm. right now so that anybody that's moving into Miramichi, we can go for a drive to Moncton, pick up furniture, okay. pick up clothing, pick Fantastic. up whatever it is children things like everything yes. is there so we don't need that what we need we need um housing mm, housing badly but a lot of it is temporary a lot of people are afraid because mm -hmm. they think okay. well i don't you know it could be for a month or two months mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be completely free these people that that are moving into the area are all willing to help mm -hmm. um we have families actually we have I think three or four families in the next two months that will be coming. Oh. A lot of them are self-sufficient. They've had businesses and, and, nice. and you'll meet the gentleman in a bit who has traveled oh. all over the world. So you have people here that either own their own businesses when they were mm. at home or that had 
incredible jobs and they're willing to give it all up to mm -hmm. move in this area so it's it's not e it's not hard to want to help right. no. um, so for now really the financial part we do need um, okay. we had a great great fundraiser that was organized by Susan Butler oh, the oh, I was Susan out of town, Butler. but kudos she, to that event she wanted to raise twenty thousand yeah. dollars surpass I yes I knew I that would not happen surprised. I knew beautiful well, and that's the thing eh, with Susan and mm -hmm. I had messaged her mm -hmm. I had messaged her just before because I I ended up with COVID at that point and couldn't attend. But just the the work she does for for the community is incredible anyway. Yeah. But she she was very focused on on hitting that goal and supporting oh, yeah. you know yeah. Ukrainians as they come to our community and and it, it was amazing amazing yeah. work by by Susan and all of her volunteers. Yes. Oh, she's quite a group that follows her. Mm -hmm. But so so you know the financial part is something that's always useful. Um, because we, we end up getting, you know, gift cards and things like that for groceries, the necessities that, that you know, they, they diapers that they and every, all that every stuff little to, thing. If they yeah. move into an apartment, you know, cleaning products, you right. know, just to, just to get them started. Yep. And they don't, nobody is asking for handouts. Yeah. None mm -hmm. of them are asking for handouts. Yeah. They're very self-sufficient. Um, I compare Ukrainians to New Brunswickers in the sense that we're hardworking mm -hmm. and we're very honest yes. and that's what you'll get. Mm -hmm. And then that, those are some of the things we need. Transportation, so that's another thing. Until the Ukrainians can get their license um, transferred yeah. from, from Ukraine to Canada, um, they, they may need a drive here or there to, to get to a doctor's appointment right. or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So housing is a big one, transportation is another big one, and the financial one too. Yeah. Uh, we also have a page on Facebook, so it's the Miramichi Supports Ukraine. We don't have, uh, we don't have um, a website, right. but we do have the Facebook page with the email address. So if you, if you go look up uh, our, our, our group there, you'll be able to get all the information that you need to amazing. there. So, yeah, that's amazing, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that fundraiser would have brought a lot of money in to go to some of those things you just mentioned. Yes. Sundries, toiletries, uh, baby clothes, adult clothes and all that. that yeah. they're, they're good for now. Yeah. Bedding and things like that. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. So the committee right now, what are you doing going forward as far as efforts go? You said there's a team of 15 on this committee and all branched out into the various categories yes. with their own jobs to do. Yes. So what particular, do you want to talk about a couple of them and what they're aiming for now? Um, so yeah, so right now um, the job part is the big one and the housing. So the two, yeah, two main ones right now. So I mean, I work with employees that are really ready and willing to employ anybody that, that will match you know, because you need you need to be able to match the, the employers with the employees, mm -hmm. but that's up to them. So what I do is I, I my team at work, we co we contact our um, employers, and then okay. from there they can do the interview, and then that that's that's the part that I do with oh, my team. Okay. And the housing part, we have a great team that's working on that, uh, and we also have the financial group that's working really hard. Mm -hmm. There's there's a couple of them, and then they have you know subcommittees. Yes. We also have a fundraising uh, team that works really hard right now. If you guys go on Facebook and go see our page. Oh. Um, we have a beautiful handmade fire pit. Oh. Tickets are on sale for the, and it's handmade by one of our members' husbands, and I don't know his name. Um, okay. But but the, um, the material was donated by Sunny Corner Enterprise. Oh, oh. it is gorgeous, just mm. gorgeous. Who Go buy want tickets. That? I, I bought tickets, but I don't know if I'm going to win. Right. And Rachel, what about the language you talked about? The mm. Nirmishi Multicultural yes. Association. So if I came as a newcomer from Ukraine. And as if I was going there, I wouldn't know a word, but some people may know some. Mm. I wouldn't have any knowledge of their of their dialect. So uh, how long does it usually take? Do you know anything about that? Um, not just, on, the, on the work end of it, the employment end of it, we also have, uh, so we work with employment counselors, which, is, which are on our team, but we also work with employment counselors that speak Ukrainian. Oh. So we have two specific that are, that are, that are working with the Miramichi Perfect. region. So mm -hmm. if anybody needs any kind of help, like we have, um, anybody that's starting a job, we can we can pay for training, uh, language training. But language training, there's a percentage percentage of it that goes from the uh, MRMA mm -hmm. that that does take care of that. So they do a big part that comes with the settlement part. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the I'm, MRMA is very busy with that. I think yeah. of children transitioning into school, like no, from right? say kindergarten to grade one. Yeah, but they are so oh, they're like sponges. <laughs> okay, like French immersion. Children my are kids sponges. Were, okay, exactly. Okay, all right. It'd be a what? lot easier for them than it would be for us Absolutely. as adults wow. to learn another language. Yeah. Well, I'm just excited they're here and safe yeah. and it's just glorious. I know. Well, I know. and that's the thing. So um, 
I th if I remember correctly, we have one family mm -hmm. that's here now. Yep, a family of seven. A uh, family of seven. Nice. Five children. That's incredible. And they are all beautiful. I mean, I, I met a couple of them, and they're just so sweet. That's amazing. Parents and five children? Parents and five children. Five children. The, wow. the youngest is three. The oldest is 14. Holy oh my gosh. gosh. Yes. Um, yeah. How many, do we have an idea of how many more we might expect that, that could come to the area? For sure, or, or almost for sure, in the next two months, we have at least three families. The next one coming should be in the next month, and it's a three-generation family. And I did see that, now that you say that, I did that see that. we were that looking on, for housing yeah, for them, yeah. and I think, I'm not sure, but we may have found something, but I can't guarantee. Yeah. So if anyone, anyone has, and he has a job already. Really? Good, yeah, good. yeah. He's a truck driver and he has a job. And That's amazing. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're getting ready to, to come over anytime now. And so there's a lot of things that they have to go through, right? They yeah. they have to make sure their visas are up to yep. date and they have to do the biometrics and, and all of that. And then once they get here, they also have to do a medical within the right. first three months that they're here, which is costly and that's another thing For that sure. our team can help. With. And to get a doctor. Uh, oh, yeah. Is that another yeah. show? I well, know. Yeah. no, but and, and you you raise a good point, right? So it, it's that it's that medical piece mm -hmm. and the cost of it. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Yes. We're just so used to thinking about it as you know Canadians yeah. that we don't pay for that, right? No. Right, no, but they have to, right, but they have to go mm -hmm. through because we have to, we have to figure out you know as a country and as we support them, you know what their medical state is. And but I mean they're coming from a developed country True. that that yeah. was just plunged into war, not you know not, not something that was long lasting. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, in a well, sense, at yeah. this point now yeah. we are. But so yeah, that, that's a challenge, right? And, and yeah. getting them to that to those appointments is a challenge. And yeah. And this specific appointment that the, the specific test that they have to do within the three months they're here, there are only three doctors in New Brunswick that are qualified to do these oh. tests. So these three doctors are going to be busy for the next little while for because sure. a lot of people are arriving but staying mostly the bigger cities, Moncton, Fredericton yep. and St. John until they figure out what it is that they want. Some people already knew they wanted to go into smaller areas mm -hmm. and you know when you don't know a country, you don't, when you don't no. know Canada, you don't know New Brunswick, you're going to go with what you see the most, right. right? Which would be the capital city or anything yeah. that's a big city. But then you see people wanting to kind of just branch out from more there. rural, even and to the countryside. So even, even more so, you know? because we have farmers, we have, yeah. you know. Yeah, eyes more isolated, more private. But we have smaller communities that's so close to Miramichi that yep. they can live just on the outskirts and come oh, to town. beautiful areas yeah. like Nelson, Logie, Villa, oh, for sure. and Nappin, sure. and up, up yeah. river as far yeah. as that goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so volunteers plays a big part in all mm. the events that are happening, you know, from the yeah. onset until now and ongoing. Um, do you need volunteers? Do you always. want to speak to? Yes. <laughs> we always need volunteers. The transportation is a big one. So, you know, if, if some people are, you know, we want to put together some kind of a list and, and schedule so okay. that, um, you know, let's say you, you say, Rachel, I want to volunteer, but I can only volunteer on Tuesdays from 9 to 10 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So we'll, ha we'll put right. a schedule like that together. So we're working on that now, but we always need volunteers that way. Um, that's one of them. And, and, and fundraising, that's another one. We always appreciate having uh, volunteers sign up. Yeah. Um, and anybody can do that if they visit our page. I'm just Facebook. thinking about, you know, my children as they were younger and a lot of people just trying to get them to the activities that they're enrolled in. So mm -hmm. say they want to do a yeah. dance class, huh? you know, Nelson Doyle dancers or swimming in the fall or what, at piano lessons, like just yeah. to get them to front, those little things that we're not, we take for granted. Yeah. To get those kids immersed into that would be for me to say, well, I can do that with your son from three to four, drive him kind of be there and yeah. pick them up and bring them home. Yeah. So yeah, volunteers would be a very, very important aspect of all yeah. of this. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's really, um, yeah, again, we take so much of this for granted, yeah. right? Because we, we live in our, you know, in our... And we have cars. We have cars. Hop in and go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It, and, and, you know, and if some people are, are living on the outskirts for now. They can't own a car because you, you need to have a bank account and you need to do this and you need mm -hmm. to do that. So there's a lot of little, little, little pieces that have to be put together before they can get in the car and be independent. Then so. there's the cost of living. Another show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're all living that right now. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> um, yep. But, you know, part of what you touched on and is so critical is, is we have we have gaps in our own you know uh, work environment, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we we have a lot of our current businesses and companies that cannot fill those gaps with uh, Canadian employees. Yep. We we've seen it over and over and over again. Those help wanted signs on just about every business that we yeah. know here. So part of what you do every day is is help to to fill those gaps and as people come from Ukraine, it's an opportunity to use their skills and, and for sure. help to do help to help our own economy. For sure. And and I mean, you know, the Canadian the, the federal government has put together um, 
uh, a, a, not a program, but a, a more like a, a page on their website where Ukrainians can go in and, and, and look at the jobs that are available for them. Mm -hmm. So they can do a match. Same thing with New Brunswick. We have uh, a platform that we have with uh, Working in B. If you look at uh, the virtual job fairs, you go in there and Ukrainians can, can sign up and all of the Canadian or Miramichi companies, let's say for us, mm -hmm. the Miramichi companies that are available and ready to, to employ Ukrainians. Now, to be on that website, to be on that platform, um, the employers have to pass certain tests. We do an right. assessment needs test with them. Uh, are they ready to uh, let the employee take some courses? Mm -hmm. Are they there for moral support, mm -hmm. mental health issues? Absolutely. So everything. So all of them that all of the names that you see on that website mm -hmm. are people that pass the needs assessments right. test. And part of that, what a lot of people don't understand, and, and I, I got a glimpse of that when I worked with um, the Multicultural, uh, Multicultural Association, is that you know, those employers, in order to be able to employ um, people from other countries, must prove that they haven't been able to hire Canadians. Right. They have to show a certain number of advertisements, job advertisements, and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's not just simply you know, I, this is where I want to go. But mm -hmm. we're actually out of time for this Aww. segment. But uh, <laughs> we can we can find uh, the group on Facebook and also uh, by email, right? So we want to make sure that they can do that, uh, contact you that way, and, and always looking for support and donations and, and uh, uh, volunteers. So don't go too far. We have a wonderful gentleman that'll be joining us right after the break. Go grab a cool beverage and, and get comfy because we have a great segment coming up. So thanks to Rachel. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to Have a Chat. I am your host today, Veronique Arsenault, and I am joined, of course, by my wonderful co-host, Judy Loge. Welcome back, everybody, for our last segment. Now, you don't want to miss this one. <laughs> and I always say this, but I mean it, absolutely. Yeah. So we um, just had a fantastic segment with uh, Rachel Bernard, of course, working with the Miramichi Supports Ukraine Committee. And now we are very pleased, very honored to welcome to the set, Sergei Zuk who is actually uh, just moved here to Miramichi from Ukraine. And uh, we just welcome, welcome, welcome to Canada. Welcome to Miramichi and welcome to have a chat. Thank you so much. First of all, let me uh, say thank you for inviting me here. I'm super excited to be here on, on your show. I saw your show before on YouTube, so. As Veronique said, it's yeah. our privilege yes. and pleasure to have you yeah. all the way from the country there. It's, just, so it's just phenomenal. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm sure it probably wasn't, um, uh, you didn't picture you'd be on TV when you got to Canada, but we're very glad to have you joining us. It's the first us. time actually in my life. Wonderful. <laughs> Your star. Good, good. So um, uh, tell us, tell the viewers, tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about, about who you are. All right. So my name is uh, Sergei. I'm from Ukraine. I born and uh, grew up in Ukraine. So like since uh, I, like I was a child, I like to travel. I was watching Discovery Channel all the time. So. Mm -hmm. When I grow up and finish university, I choose a career in the cruise line industry. Oh. So for more, like for last 10 years, I was working for one of the biggest, uh, largest cruise lines, Ooh. and uh, which has the uh, biggest cruise ships in the world, actually. We love, we love cruise. cruise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, I yeah. miss cruising. Funny <laughs> yeah, so. we didn't meet you. No. <laughs> They're so small. You know? I know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the cruise okay. yeah. So uh, I really want to know, I've been watching all of the sheer horror that's been played out for the last number of months, mm -hmm. too many months, over in your beautiful country with your beautiful people mm -hmm. that we've seen. Mm -hmm. Everyone looks so loving and caring and nurturing as family members with their children. And my heart goes out to the people. Tell us about life in the Ukraine. You've mentioned about growing up in your beautiful country, that it was good and you had a university training. Talk to us a little bit more about the other side of it as to what you experienced in the Ukraine before coming to Miramichi, Sergei. So with my life, I have a regular life. Like every Ukrainian, you know, we were planning our future, you know, we enjoy our life there. I have friends, family there, of course, and uh, it's a beautiful country, actually. We have four seasons, uh, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Yes. And, uh, Does it snow like here? Uh, I don't know yet. True. But, yeah. <laughs> get ready, get ready. <laughs> but we have snow, some snow okay. too. Yes, we have nice new nature. We have mountains and the Black Sea. So Ew. we have and good, nice. good people. I've read yes. all about the great kindness people, of their, the people, nature of their sure. hearts. Uh, hardworking people too. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, hardworking. I've I've yes. read that and heard that too. Mm -hmm. 
but yourself, what kind of a like an experience did you have when you had to get out and say I have to relocate and get out of here? So actually, I was um, like on the cruise ship, right? And it was interesting actually. So I had a break, and normally I don't watch TV, but at, the, at that time I just tried to switch on and just watch the news. So at the time I was <laughs> switched on the news and I watched TV and it was the live uh, uh, of the Putin, you know, he was declaring actually a war against mm. Ukraine. Mm. So I realized it's uh, like really serious. I started to call uh, my brother, my friends. Mm -hmm. It was four o'clock in the morning in Ukraine at the time. So they said, no, we don't hear anything, we just sleep. And uh, I start to check the social news yes. like Twitter and the Instagram. And uh, I see already reports like rockets already lands in the, my city, mm. other cities. Mm. So it was just. <laughs> it must have been uh, terrifying and shocking. Yes, yeah, just a shock. I mean, I still remember my feeling and I yes. still shocked, you know, yes. from this Fear. news. Yes. Fear. Fear. And yes. uh, I called another my friend that told him about his news and he said, I know this news, I'm already in the, the part of the defense team of, Ukraine, of the, my city. Mm -hmm. He's still fighting in oh. Ukraine. What city did you leave? What, where it's did you grow up at the same? Did you leave the same city that you grew up yes, in? Yes, I born in Kharkiv. It's, I grew up in the Kharkiv. It's a big, quite big city, okay. 1.5 million. Oh. And it's a very beautiful city. We have nice parks, mm. uh, nice. Has that been all clean. destroyed now, that whole section? Or is it other? I mean, uh, now it's, I think it's like, 70% of the schools are destroyed. Oh, my heart. And uh, just uh, like uh, next to my house, uh, yeah. one school hit two times already in yeah. one week. It's sickening and it's sheer brutality and nonsense. Yeah. It's just, and it the, doesn't make sense. And the, like clinics, you know, hospitals, like half yes. of the hospitals destroyed in my city. Yes, where people need medical attention so yeah. badly. And do, do you still have family? My father still lives there, okay. but he's uh, old already and he don't want to move anywhere. But I try to help him, you know, at least uh, yeah. like financial, he can go with some. Yes. He have food at least, you know, and pay bills. Thankfully, you can check on him. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we still have internet there, but yeah. oh, my heart. When, so how did you how did you make the decision to say I know I have to go? Uh, so <laughs> decision is easy because I was on the ship, right? And uh, actually, I want to give credit to my company. So they help also a lot of uh, they, they mm. help a lot of Ukrainians. They give us free internet. They mm. say as if you want to extend your contracts, it's okay. You can stay longer on the ship. Really? But I reached the point I have already. Um, like nine months straight in the same ship and mm. there is Bahamian low, lows. Yes. I cannot be on the ship more than nine months. Okay. Uh, so, but the- uh, Contract. Yeah, yeah. Co yeah, contract. So I cannot stay longer than nine months in the same no. ship. And you couldn't go home. Uh, I can't go home because I realized, okay, I, I can go home, but what I yes. can do there? Yes. I'd be more useful uh, to work somewhere to help my family. Right, right. that's yes. right. And, uh, so what made you decide to move to Canada or did Canada <laughs> choose you? I think it's both. Okay. Yes. You know okay. why? Because uh, as I said, I work on cruise ship and I visit already uh, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, okay. Prince Edward Island and uh, Labrador and Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. So I uh, like fell in love in like, the time when I was visiting this mm -hmm. uh, province and Quebec mm -hmm. too. Okay. So, so, so I hear about this program for Ukrainians, emergency travel, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's a good uh, uh, place to be actually, right? Because I speak English, you know, first of all, yes, yes. it's easy for me, more easier, and uh, you I know You speak English very well. You and do. the uh, beautiful country, I know the nice people, very kind yeah. people here, helpful. Welcome. So My Ukrainian's welcome. terrible. I would speak to you, I would <laughs> talk I to you, none. but it's not fluent at all. Yeah, no. <laughs> I have none, I have none. So you're doing really, really yeah. well with the English, I am impressed. Yeah. Did you find it, so we are, we are a small province mm -hmm. and a small community. We are a city, but a small, small city. Did you find it hard to settle here, to meet people, no, to connect? No, for me it was so easy. Okay. Actually, I want to say thank you to owners of the, my like, job place, the Terio and Heichi Pit and Moss factory. Yes. They help a lot. They uh, prepare house for me. They meet me at airport. Actually, president of the company, Mr. Gary. Hi. <laughs> Uh, he met me at the airport and uh, he brought me to the house. Oh my goodness. Uh, they helped me to f f get all the documents, you know. Yeah. So 
I have so much help from them. That's amazing. Yeah. What more could the people of Miramichi, we talked to Rachel earlier in her committee, and they're really uh, you know, keen on making you feel as welcome and as settled in as possible and getting you into the right areas that you need to, mm -hmm. to, to live on. But what would you like to see more of or more happening for you, Sergei, and your, your friends that are here and families that you know? I know. I mean, it's already, like, it's already a lot, but I realize, I mean, I understand it's not everything in the, in the hand of the community, you know, like mm -hmm. housing and transportation. Right. Housing is hard. hard here. I mean, but the, you can do as much as you can. I can see. Yeah. We have some. We, we receive so much help. So much. Uh, That's wonderful. Yeah. But people are friendly. You find, and they're reaching out to you and embracing you. <laughs> like, are they making you feel like you belong? Yeah, of course. Because uh, you do belong they now. Yes, they, they come in uh, to our house to just to hang out, uh, met us. Mm. Well, there. Yeah, so, uh, it's incredible. So amazing, and yeah. So if you think about if you think about um, other Ukrainians that maybe mm -hmm. uh, you know trying to make that decision to either leave Ukraine or to pick coming to Canada or even to New Brunswick, what would you want to say to them? What what advice would you like to give them? No, well, actually, I can advise them to move more to rural area than to choose the big cities because there is more like is prices higher and. Uh, yeah. Maybe you can get less help actually there because everybody, like, to, they care about themselves. They busy to work. Mm -hmm. They they need to parent too. And but here, it's more job actually. I think believe yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Have you had to kind of other than looking out for your family, making sure that they're still living and well and looked after over there? Um, have you been trying to turn away from the nightmare of a situation that is ongoing in Ukraine? Have you learned to tune out? and focus on other things like our beautiful river. I try river. to do that, I try to do that, but still when I like check sometimes news and when I see rockets just uh, 100 meters from my house mm. and I see my friends, you know, like one really? of my friends, uh, she couldn't uh, talk for two days because mm. she, uh, she said she was uh, see the like uh, bright uh, like flash. Yes. yes. After a few seconds, she heard the noise, broken windows, and she gets scared. Trauma. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you worry it's always of that. Of course, I feel like I, I feel what they feel like. Should yes. I mean not I can not the same, of course, no. but I still. No. You'd love them all to come here. Yes. You would love them all to be able to yeah. find a spot somewhere yes. out of that yeah. war-torn, beautiful country that you had. So when you think ahead now, um, and when you think about your future, mm -hmm. what would you like to see happen for yourself here in Canada? Oh, I want to be helpful to new Ukrainians who come in here as much as I can, at least uh, if I do a translator in English, or mm -hmm. maybe when I get a vehicle, I can do some transportation for them, first mm -hmm. of all, within my hands. and. Uh, uh, it's a good place to stay here. I, I don't have plan, plans to move anywhere That's else. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. And yeah. You yeah. brought with you a guest that we you know we weren't able to have on, you know, due to the language barrier, obviously, and he will learn. Um, but he's here with his, like, he brought you a uh, driver came, and then one of your friends, who is a father of five children, and his yes. wife have moved to Miramichi. How incredible is that to yes. bring your little family and just <laughs> feel safe and loved and sure. have them all thriving, right? Yes. What do you think of our food and our culture? What do you think is the most, uh, what's the hardest thing for you to adapt to in Miramichi? Uh, no, it's not hard, but it's unusual, you know, so <laughs> much uh, like nature here. Yes. So much forest, you can yes. see yes. bears in wildlife, you can see moose, you can yeah, see yeah, squirrels. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yes, you, you can see bears in your you backyard. You can see that in Ukraine, <laughs> because I mean, most of the land is developed already. It's yeah. a fields or farms or cities. Yeah. Millions of people mm, yes. in cities. Yes. As opposed to, like you said, forest land here is just mm. endless. Yeah, it's endless. Yeah. And it's this pretty. It's pretty. We have so much pretty. floral. And no and traffic jams like in my city. No. And no, no. construction, right? No. no. Construction. <laughs> That's a joke. That's we have a joke. too much construction. Well, yeah. No, it's good, actually. It's good. That's one yes. of our seasons. I know it is. <laughs> we do call it construction season. Yeah. Um, but no, and, and you're right. I, is there is there a food that you miss from home? Yeah, I miss some food. We have like cold soup. We call the kroshka. Cold oh. soup. Cold soup or kroshka? Yes, it's oh. white soup. Cold soup. Oh, I've had it on cruise yeah. ships actually. Like I've that. had it's not that particular mm, one, but on idea. cruise ships, I believe like it was a theme according to whatever evening it mm. was. You had to dress up kind of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to make yourself feel part of that culture. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought I did. I've, I've tried. So what is it exactly? It's a white uh, cold soup. Yep. It's uh, so there is some vegetables and uh, meat, but it's just um, no noodle. 
No, no noodle. No. It's a, like for the summertime, it's most popular soup because it's cold. Uh, nice. Yes, refreshing. Yes, nice. Refreshing, yes. Do it, people drink a lot it's of... It's like a little sour too. Oh. Do mm -hmm. people like to drink pop and juice over there or what are people... Like what's the the tea? Norm? We drink a tea? lot of tea. Yeah. Oh. Not coffee. Not coffee. Oh, coffee too, but coffee in the morning. But during the day, tea. tea. A lot of tea. That's yes. interesting. I'd love to learn more about yes. people's cultures. I really do find it fascinating. Well, and my hope is now, as more uh, Ukrainians come to you know to choose Canada and to choose here in the Miramichi, that we will see things like you know we have a wonderful Indian restaurant that opened mm. you know a year and a half ago. We have a wonderful Jamaican restaurant that opened a year and a half ago. Mm. We have a great Filipino. Um, grocery store that's it's a small one but it's it's a it's a store so I'm hoping the same will happen that we can learn Actually, more about you know, Ukraine. I was thinking about that because I have expertise in the cruise uh, ship, yes, right? Yes, yes. I was working uh, as a beverage operation supervisor. Oh. So I have experience in food and beverage, you okay. know, business and you know, I know how to run and uh, yes. <laughs> this that kind of thing. That could happen. Yes. Yes. That could be a dream that you should go towards once yeah. you're more familiar with the area mm -hmm. and like you said, housing is a problem so to get a little business upstart it might be a chore. But with the help of the Miramichi people, yes. maybe you could put your skills to work someday yeah, and sure, have a Ukrainian cuisine. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm getting excited They're Plus, already. Uh, for sure, when so much Ukrainians come in, some of them were cooks before. Or yes, yeah. Mm. Um, so we maybe they, some of them has a restaurant business before. That's right. right. Help yeah. you out. Yeah. So we only have a couple minutes left, but um, I guess, you know, if you think about uh, Canada and the people of, of the Miramichi and the people that have helped you, what is the thing that you would like to say, you know, to Canadians about Ukraine and about your experience? I just want to say experience? thank you for everybody, for everything, how much you help. And uh, just want to wish all my friends and family stay safe, yes. be healthy. And yes. I just want to this uh, senseless war finish as soon yes. as possible. Well, yes. you're a very lovely gentleman. Like I said, it's an honor to have had you on our show to share with our viewers all yeah. about your new life here. <laughs> Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, as we as we uh, we want to make sure too, though, for those that are that are out there watching the show, as we think back to what Rachel said, is that you know they're absolutely looking mm -hmm. for volunteers. That you know, uh, Sergey had a wonderful experience, and that the the job that he came to, the president actually came and picked him up and and got him housing and things like that. So. You know, uh, but we do need volunteers. Uh, Miramichi Supports Ukraine is on Facebook. Uh, they absolutely need volunteers for those those critical drives uh, to help support. The Miramichi Multicultural Association is, is helping, of course, with uh, English language training. That's always tough for you. It's wonderful that you've come and, and your English will improve. Uh, it's already great. So. <laughs> Good job on yes. that. Uh, but there, there are so many services and things that, that they will absolutely need as far as support. Donations. Uh, donations. There will be other fundraisers to happen. I know that. You know, we are a very giving community. Mm -hmm. There is no question. Uh, but there's always more to do as we support uh, the families. And as the kids go to school, you know, in September, there will, they adapt. Kids, kids adapt much better than oh, the, yes. us as adults, of course. But, um, you know, they'll, they'll be that transition as they go back to school. Exactly. In a new environment right they're leaving everything that they've known and they've, they're coming here so um, if you have an opportunity to to volunteer um, or to give a few hours even to uh, spend some time driving them around to those critical appointments I know that the committee would absolutely be very grateful for that as would the people that are coming so um, you know in the in the last little bit as we talk here uh, we we are so pleased to have you Thank you so much. We are so thank pleased you. to have your skills and, and your wonderful spirit here in Miramichi and the region. So thank you for, for choosing us and, and uh, we choose you too. First Ukrainian I've ever met in person. I know. <laughs> so, you. Yes. Um, nice you know, thank you everybody for a fantastic show. Have an amazing week everybody and uh, do what you can for your fellow humans. That's all we're going to leave you with. So thank you everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.